All right, I've got some real fun stuff to share with you today. This is some functionality that Flow's been needing for a long time. Let's start by making an HTTP call without writing any code. So I have this action in here. You can see it's called make HTTP call. And what I have here is I have a URL. So I'm going to call this URL. I could set this. This could be done dynamically so that the URL changes at runtime based on what's passed in. In this case, it's static. It's an exchange rate API. Uh, it's going to give me some exchange rates. And all I have to do is make this call. These are US dollar exchange rates. It's a get call. If I needed to specify some input params or some authorization headers, I could add those. If I wanted to do a post and needed to add, to, add a body, I could do that as well. But this is pretty simple. It's just going to be a get. And I'm going to be able to click this test call out button to actually run it. And there it is. So I was able to, right from within my flow, make a call out. Uh, and here's the result. So pretty typical for a um, pretty typical for a web call. You get back a JSON string, which includes inside of it a JSON body string. Um, and this is this is powerful. So why why hasn't this been built before? Well. The main reason this really hasn't been, well, the simple answer is this was built a few months ago by Moon, um, a, a, a great flow developer. So in a, in a large sense, uh, this is building on some ideas that he was the first pioneer of. Um, and what he realized uh, is, is that the major problem with doing this is how do you get information out of here? Let's suppose that we want to get like the Australian dollar rate. That's right here. So as of the moment, it's 1.2947. Now I want to be able to pull that on my flow. I don't have the, I don't have the ability to do a bunch of parsing code to pull that out. And this is a pretty complex JSON structure. So you can use make HTTP call and pass out this body string and have this body string to work with. Um, but to make that really powerful, you're going to want to use one or two other actions that are part of the package that this is being distributed in. And those actions collectively uh, we're referring to as the as data mapper. So the, the issue here is how do you pull data out of complex JSON that's coming back from web calls? Well, let's go take a look at another flow. All right, so this flow is called get foreign exchange data, and it starts with exactly the same call that we made before. It's gonna make that call, and that data is gonna come back like this. But we want to extract uh, that Australian dollar rate. We also wanna extract what the status is. Uh, what the, uh, actually, we're gonna extract what the body result, what the result is. Um, so, you can see that I've got a couple other actions here. So the next action that I'm going to use here is called extract JSON values. So you can see it's not that complicated. What am I doing here? Well, I'm taking the that body string that was returned from my API call and I'm passing it into this action. So I'm doing that right here. And then I'm specifying some mapping keys. And you can see that what I've basically said, I'm mapping, I'm mapping, I'm filling out these values and, and that's going to cause certain, these static outputs, value one, value two, there's, there, you can have up to 20 of these output values um, when you extract JSON. Uh, and you can see here that what I've done is I've specified conversion rates dot AUD. So I'm using dot notation um, referencing off of the body. If we go back here and take another look at this, kind of convenient to keep being able to run that. So the body string is basically everything that starts right from here. And you can see that one of the, that its top level key is conversion rates. And then I want the AUD. So conversion rates dot AUD uh, is going to get me this number. And then I'm also pulling out result as well. So we're going to run that, and then we're going to throw that value 
uh, into this little console readout. So let's 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 first run that. Let's see that we can extract those values from deep inside that JSON. You can see that success. So we made the call, pulled the values out, and they're being output out the back of this this action called extract JSON values as value one and value two. These are these are text attributes. So right now, at least in this initial incarnation, everything that's coming out of this JSON is going to be text values. Um, and uh, and that's 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 what's available right now. So super powerful. You can you can navigate deep into JSON to pull out useful values and that makes actually making callouts declaratively from within flow here much more useful. Uh, and so there's one additional action in this package and that addresses the challenge of using, of extracting data from arrays that are inside the JSON, AKA collections or lists or groups. So let's take a look. So here, this is some JSON that gets returned from a call to Slack. And you can see that some of the values we could easily reference. We could go message.text and get this string. You go message.username and get this string. But what about this attachments group? You can see that this is an array. So there could be one, there could be 10. So I can't just go message.attachments.text because that doesn't make it clear whether I'm referring to the first one, the second one, or the third one. And even if we allowed you to reference it and say message.text. message.attachments.text like zero, that still wouldn't be very useful in a flow context. What we need here is we need a way to convert this list of attachments to a collection of records, Salesforce records that we can then do something with. So in our example, we're going to use this particular JSON array. So think of this as a subset. Uh, it's, it's, I've, ch I've changed, fiddled with it a little bit. Imagine that you went in first and you got message attachment. So you got this string right here. That's what this string represents. And you can see that this one has, for our testing purposes, it's got two different objects here, two different attachments. So, what we're gonna do in this example is we are going to use a uh, text template called attachment JSON array. So it's a little, little misleading. It looks like it's kind of following from those earlier examples, but actually we're just grabbing this string right here um, for the demo purposes. So you can see this is the kind of string that you would get if you, uh, if you did use the first action, extract JSON and you pulled out uh, the array, you'd have this string. And so now you're kind of like, okay, I got this array, but I got to do something to, that's useful. So let's take a look at the second action, map JSON array. So here's where we're pulling out that JSON array. Now, right here, we're selecting the object that we want to map those JSON objects to. So the idea here is you need to either have or create uh, an object uh, that you have, that has fields that are a good fit for that JSON data that's coming in. In this case, I've created a custom object called custom attachment. You can see that right here. It's an object manager. I happen to call it custom attachment. I added some fields here. I added a file create date and an ID number, uh, and it's got a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those two records out of JSON and create custom attachment records. And I'm gonna save those records and then I'm gonna look for them here. So you can see that I'm gonna, after I'm done mapping, here's where I'm gonna create those records. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is I'm creating mappings from my JSON fields to the fields of custom attachment. So in this case, the JSON is ID create date and name. Let's go back and take another look. That's just what this particular uh, JSON format, you're generally not gonna have any control over that. You're gonna be getting some JSON blob and it's going to have decided long ago that it uses ID 
and it uses name and it uses create date for this object. But you may also not have any control over the fields of the target record. Now, in my example, I just showed you, I created this custom attachment. So I, I could have named um, my output fields, ID, create date and name, but I picked different names just to emphasize that really the goal here is to support use cases where you just didn't get to create any of these fields, but you got to map the data from one source into one target. That's really what data mapping is all about. So what we're doing here is we're saying, take the values for each of the JSON objects, take the ID value and map it to a record in custom attachment called ID number, take the create date and map it to this file create date, take the name and map it to this. And you could add more keys if you needed to. And what that outputs is, we can take a look just to see what the output is. It's going to it's going to output an S object list of this type. So it's going to output custom attachment, it, basically a custom attachment record collection. But we don't need these manual advanced variables anymore because we're using automatic output handling. And I've got that right here. I selected the output from map JSON array S object list. So that is basically what I'm passing to create records and then here we're going to see um, a couple of uh, IDs to reflect those custom attachments. So let's go back to our example. We're actually running this. Uh, let's just keep running it. All right. So you see here we've got two IDs, but what I'm going to do to show you instead a little more evocatively, I'm going to refresh this and you can see that we have created two records uh, with the appropriate field values from this JSON, where is it, from this JSON string. And so very powerful to put this all together. You can start making calls to HTTP, to any web service, get that JSON back. And through a combination of array mapping and sort of uh, probing in to pluck out the field values you want, you can pull out the values you need from that JSON and use it to create records. Uh, and one other thing that's useful here is you can use merge fields. So instead of uh, this hard wiring, this base currency to USD, I will set it to something dynamic, uh, base currency. And uh, let's pass in by default, we'll just pass in a different base currency, the pound. And now if we run this, we're going to get a different number because the the rate of the Great British Pound to the Australian dollar, AUD, you'll remember the AUD is what we're actually extracting, is 1.82. And to verify that, we can actually go and click Test Callout. Now, the cool thing about Test Callout, um, if, you are, if there are any merge fields in the URL, you'll get a chance to plug in test values. So we can plug in a test value that we want and then you can see here that the GBP to AUD currency is actually, uh, you almost, you get about uh, 1.8 Australian dollars for every pound. So that's kind of cool. So um, very exciting to have this available in Flow. Again, I want to give a call out to Moon, who uh, you can see back in December was innovating here and figuring out how to pull, uh, how to pull out uh, JSON lists and how to do JSON parsing. Um, and, uh, so, uh, give it a try, check it out. Let us know how it's going.